The average person is said to spend 15 minutes in the bathroom. Why not take advantage of that time and learn something new? Presenting the 15-minute podcast on weird facts, crazy details, and funny particulars that you'll be able to enjoy while you're taking a sh- Well, on your free time. Welcome to The Shit with Sam Butler. Welcome to another episode of The Shit Podcast. I have a very special guest, Jesse Aguirre. Jesse, welcome back. Thank you for having me back. Hey, thank you for being here. You know, um, I had the opportunity of being on y'all's podcast. Yes. Yeah, Otra Ronda El today, Podcast. Today, actually. It actually came uh-huh. out today. That's it awesome. Today. Uh-huh. And uh, it <clears throat> it's, it's uh, we started talking and uh, uh, we were talking about Oktoberfest. Mm-hmm. And Oktoberfest being what it is, of course, uh, David Hasselhoff came up, yes. Night Rider. Uh, yes. And so I, I said something on your podcast about him being a race car driver for Porsche at one time. Uh huh. And so then after we left, after we got done with he the was episode, a celebrity in Germany, yeah, right? Yeah, he was a celebrity in Germany. Uh huh. And so I thought, okay, let's do a David Hasselhoff episode. Okay. And let's, let's talk an- about. And guess what? I found out he. W- it, I couldn't find any information on him being a race car driver. Really? Really? I had okay. I had read a story somewhere, uh-huh. but I couldn't find any information. But. All the stuff I found out about David Hasselhoff is pretty incredible. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean he was in the SpongeBob. <laughs> he was on SpongeBob. Yes, yeah. he was. Yeah, I know. That's in the one movie. Of the, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's in the SpongeBob movie. Now, actually, that's one of the things they say about him is that he's always been very willing to make fun of himself. Okay. Yeah. And that's one of the things that's likable about him. Matter oh, of fact, everybody uh, loves people who does that. Yeah, I was looking at a, a I was looking at a video today of one of his latest songs, and it was so ridiculous. You know, <laughs> it was so '80s type, and I was just I think it was called like uh, "I Will Survive" or something. I was going like, "Wow, this is like very '80s pop." Okay, and it was like 2021 or something. It was crazy. Okay, okay, that that sounds weird. And no, no. So, <laughs> David Michael Hasselhoff, they nicknamed him the Hoff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's an American actor, singer, producer, television personality, and businessman. He's got several world records. Okay, we're gonna talk about that. He was born July seventeenth, nineteen fifty-two. He's sixty-nine years old in Baltimore, Maryland, United States. He's still alive. He's still alive. Oh, he's sixty-nine. He's actually uh, one point nine three meters, which is like six foot four. So he's two inches taller than I am. Oh my god. Yeah, he's a pretty tall, dude. Yes. Yeah. So one of the weird facts about David Hasselhoff, I mean, we know about Knight Rider. Mm -hmm. That was the show that made him famous. Yes. Right. He Um, was in Baywatch, too? He was in Baywatch. But Knight Rider made him famous. I know, I know. Do you remember Knight Rider? No. I think I was so little. Uh You never watched Knight Rider? No. Really? Then this episode is just gone to shit. (laughs) No, just kidding. No, Knight Rider Rider was a show about a car. Uh Uh-huh. And... uh, Michael Knight was like a investigator, detective, like like he was this guy that was always solving. He had a company called like Knight Industries, and he was always stopping the bad guys. Okay. That, as a matter of fact, that's one of the weird facts about Knight Rider was that he was like the Lone Ranger if he had a car. Okay. Right. Instead of a horse. Instead of a horse. Uh-huh. Yeah. So that's that's what that's what they based the series. Okay. On. Okay. 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 Right. Sounds and so his car was called Kit. The car. The car. What's Kit. called Kit? K I T T. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And, and it stood like for Night Industries, whatever. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Talking transportation. I don't know. It was like, but those were the, the those were the initials of the car. Oh, okay. And the car would talk. Like her. Uh, yeah, but it would it was computerized and it would talk to him. Okay. And so he would be Kit, and the Kit would the car would drive by himself. Mm-hmm. So anytime Michael Knight got into trouble, the car would come rescue him. Like, like like Bumblebee and Transformers, <laughs> kind of like that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I mean, but that was done in the eighties. It was a sitcom. Yeah. And that was his big break. He had done some movies prior to that, mm-hmm. but Ki- but Knight Rider made was him the big hit. Made him the big hit. Okay. And if you get a chance, there's a video uh, that went viral called uh, Knight Rider in Español. Okay. It's hilarious. The uh, Knight Rider in Español. In Español. Okay. It's like a dubbed over thing. It's so funny. Oh, I love those right. videos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so a lot. he had a lot of, there's a lot of weird facts about this guy. Um, first of all, he does Knight Rider and he's extremely famous. Yes. Because of the show. Mm-hmm. But then Knight Rider is over, gets canceled. Mm-hmm. And he's, he, he likes to sing. So he sings 
and he doesn't do he's, so hot. He's not a good singer. He's not. He's he doesn't do too good in the United okay. States. Okay, okay. But one of the days that he was out and about, a uh, person came up to him and said, "Hey, you know, we everybody loves you in Austria." And okay. he was like, "What?" And he goes, "Yeah, your record's number one on the charts in Austria." So then he, so then he gets on the phone uh -huh. and he calls up his agent. His agent finds out that he is on the number one charts in Austria. Uh -huh. So he flies to Austria and organizes a a, a tour. Uh -huh. So so he does the Austrian tour, and he's a superstar in Austria. Okay. Right, and then from there he goes, and then from there he gets famous in Germany. In Germany, okay. Yeah. So he's he finds out, hey, I'm not doing anything. Nothing's really happening for me. And then he finds out, dude, everybody loves you in Austria. Right. Okay. So he goes that route. He got so famous in Germany that in 1989, a couple of days after the Berlin Wall fell, mm -hmm. he sings on he sings there. On for, the wall. On the wall. Right? On the <laughs> wall. On the wall. Yeah. Oh and God. he sings a song called uh -huh. uh, Freedom, Looking for Freedom. And it went triple platinum in Europe. <laughs> His song went triple platinum in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I mean Europe. <laughs> Europe, you know. Uh it, it uh the Hof had a number one hit in the German pop charts in 1989 with the single also called Looking for Freedom and uh it was while performing on the Berlin Wall, New Year's Eve 1989. I think I never hear one of his songs. No, I mean it, no? he wasn't that popular here for for singing. But I mean, hey, no. if, if 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 I found out That I was a famous stand-up comic in Germany, mm -hmm. I'd go do a German tour tomorrow. Of course. Right? I'd be like, sure. Cool. Mm. It's a small country, but Give I'll me take your it. money, Germany. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Not only that, it's great to it's great to go where your fans are. If yes. people like you, then go. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm 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 working in Mexico. <laughs> you know? Because we like you here and we I love know. you here. I know, uh -huh. thank you. I love it here too. But it's one of those things that it's like if you get if you have success somewhere else, he did it. Um, he see the opportunity and take it. Yeah, his performance. It says his performance had a lasting impact. The Berlin Wall performance has had a lasting impact on German pop culture. With Hasselhoff commenting that the song became an anthem and a song of hope <laughs> for the people of Germany. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he was um, giving hope to German. He people. was giving hope to he German people. To, okay. To okay. East Germans, West Germans. Yeah. Um, he had. A very severe alcohol problem. I, oh, actually, there was a video of him yeah, uh, on the floor. It was quite a scandal. Eating a burger. Uh huh. Right? Yeah. And the thing about it is that his daughter actually videotaped him doing that. She was the one who leaked it to the press. Yeah. yeah. She, she did that to help him. Uh, so he see what he did wrong. And yeah. he like... become a better father, I think. I don't know. And he says it's thanks to that he, that he got it under control. It worked. It worked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it helped him. It helped mm -hmm. him see. He said that after he was quoted as saying, after he saw the video, saw how pathetic he looked, that that actually motivated him to get help. Okay. And so he battled the the alcohol problem. Mm -hmm. So we know that he was a night rider. We talked about that. That was an '80s phenomenon. That's like one of the things. He actually had a race of '80s. When we were talking about race cars, he actually did a race of the '80s superstars, and it was him. Uh -huh. And Eric Estrada from Chips, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and it was the other guy from the A Team. Uh, shoot, lost his name. He was face on the A Team. Uh, uh, they're all. This is all before your time. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, But they yeah. all did like the celebrity race, uh -huh. and they got they raced the car. Like he rode Kit, the guy rode the van from the A Team, and then uh, Eric Estrada had the motorcycle from Chips. <laughs> you know. Okay. Um, okay. That that who won. Uh huh. Now there was a show. I don't remember. I don't know. I didn't. Uh -huh. I didn't look. I didn't. I was like, oh, they did a race. <laughs> uh <-huh>. He. Uh, <laughs> he looked that up real quick. On the '80s celebrity race, uh, he was the only one who saw the potential in Baywatch. Baywatch, the show. He was got, the one. It got canceled after the yeah. first uh -huh. season. Uh huh. But he's like, no. We can do this. We can do this. Okay. And he went ahead and put his own money up and became an executive producer. And that thing went on from like, it started in 1989, mm -hmm. and it went all the way to like 2004. Yeah, it worked. It worked. They they they, they make a uh, a movie and everything. A movie and uh, with the rock with everybody. And Zac Efron. Yes. 
Zac Efron, yeah. <laughs> Actually, Leonardo DiCaprio was supposed to be in the movie, in, in the show. As, as who? As Hasselhoff's son, but he was too old. Oh, uh, right. Amy. So they're like, nah, you're too old. Uh -huh. but, but he was, um, DiCaprio was only 15 at the time. So they wanted a younger kid, like 11 or 12. Oh. I, think, uh, I thought that in the movie with the rock is like no, no. Okay. No, no. no, this was with this was the TV show. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. The TV show. The TV show had a lot of interesting things. Like, um, for example, they had the slow motion, them running on the running beach. Running on the beach. Right. Mm -hmm. That was actually David Hasselhoff takes credit for that. The, he, that he was his idea? It was his idea. Okay. Because it saved film and time. And so they had to fill in the episodes and, and they needed to film more scenes. So he's like, hey, these slow motion scenes, we got to put more of them in there. And There's a Mexican <laughs> TV show called Super Campeones. I saw it the other day. <laughs> Listen to this. You're going to do it. <laughs> yeah. But it's actually inspired from some videos that they took at the Olympics, the 88 Olympics. Mm -hmm. And um, they were filming the 100 yard dash. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the photographer slowed it down, and they could see the runners running in slow motion. And he says, we need to do that for the show. Okay. And that's where all those uh, the, the, the the swimsuit shots. Yeah, the running in the yeah, beach. Yeah, in uh -huh. the beach, right? The swimsuit shots. Now, another interesting fact about that, nobody could uh, gain weight on the of show. Like, like it was prohibited, though. You had to maintain your weight the whole time. You know, they're like, no, nope, nothing. I would have been out of that show like in 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, Sam, you weighed I less mean, when you walked in the door. What happened? I, I drink in, in the In the movie, the, the remake they do recently, Zac, Zac Efron, in an interview, he said that, that he also wasn't allowed to gain, gain weight and it was really hard to keep the body that for that movie. In shape. Mm -hmm. Also, a guy that made his debut there was Jason Momoa. Yeah. yeah, he was, but he did it in the TV show uh -huh. when they uh -huh. shot it because uh -huh. the TV show went from like LA, and then they're like, okay, this is getting pretty boring, and then they went to Australia, uh -huh. and in Australia, that's where the that's where the the slogan came, don't uh, don't hassle the Hoff, <laughs> right? Because that's the thing. Okay, don't hassle the Hoff, uh -huh. hassle Hoff, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. It's a play on words, uh -huh. and it says that a lot of people were upset in Australia because. Um, They, the way they set up on the beach, they were uh, alienating all of the koalas. Mm -hmm. So the koalas were, were like being pushed off. And so they ended up moving the production to Hawaii. Okay. And when they move it to Hawaii, that's when uh, Jason Momoa comes on the show as a lifeguard. Uh, yeah, he's and a he's, Hawaiian. And he's all young. Yeah. He's Hawaiian. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. Hawaiian. Yeah. Now, I remember that. He, he, set a Guinness World he set two Guinness World Records. Okay. Uh, what do you think the first world record was for? Running on the beach. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no. He was the most watched man in the world on TV. Okay. 1.1 billion viewers in But, 142 countries. Okay. That's like how, the, the, him or the him. Baywatch in, in general? He was considered the most watched man in the world. Okay. And Guinness World Records got that, except Hugh Laurie on the drama House beat him because that became more popular over time. They, so he lost that world record. His second world record, what do you think it is? Running on the beach. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Running on the beach in underwear. <laughs> and Why? Yeah. Give it to him. It was his idea. <laughs> He's the man with, the, with, with the, the tallest bungee jump in history. Uh, but it's a reverse bungee jump. Okay. Do you know what a reverse bungee jump is? No, what is? When I first read it, I thought that he was going to like jump backwards. Uh huh. Right? Yeah. No. no. Huh. You're on the ground and they slingshot you into the <gasps> air. Right? So he has a world record for the, the tallest reverse bungee jump. <laughs> I know it's like 500 feet or something. It was like a lot. And, and uh, if you watch reverse bungee jump videos, mm -hmm. it's crazy. Oh my God. Yeah. I didn't know that exists. Uh, yeah, it's actually pretty cool. Like, I'd like to try that, but I don't think no. they can make a bungee strong enough. Mm -hmm. But um, he's a Broadway actor mm -hmm. and he sings on Broadway and acts on Broadway. Uh, on the uh, he did the, his debut on Mr. Je on Jekyll and Hyde on Broadway, mm -hmm. and uh, he starred in Chicago and the producers. So he's got that. Now, one of the things that I thought was pretty crazy about this, and I think this is what 
what's insane mm -hmm. is that in Iran, they, okay. they would sell tickets mm -hmm. so you could watch Baywatch on television. Why? Well, because well, Iran. because mm -hmm. Baywatch was so popular. Mm-hmm. And Hasselhoff and all. And he, first of all, he didn't want Pamela Anderson on the show. He didn't want her? He didn't want her. Okay. Because he thought that she would take away from him. The spotlight. Yeah, the spotlight. Mm -hmm. But it actually helped him because it, it grew to different peaks with, with uh, Pamela uh -huh. Anderson. And so it gave him a global popularity. Mm -hmm. Well, in Iran, if you wanted to watch the show, you had to buy tickets. Because, because of Pamela. Be, because, yeah, people want to watch it because of, because of that. But there was no television. So you'd have to buy tickets from people that had satellite, and then you'd go watch it at somebody's house. That's how popular that is. Okay. So that wraps that us up. Whole for, business. There's so much more to talk about this guy. He's in, he's pretty pretty crazy, uh, David Hasselhoff. But uh, we're out of time now. Uh, but uh, thank you for joining me on this adventure. Uh, thank you for <laughs> the shit it was podcast. I, I didn't know all of that. I didn't know his song. He sang. He he's said he's worth uh, as a producer. Like when he became the producer for Baywatch, mm -hmm. he didn't have the budget was very low, uh -huh. so he took a pay cut. Okay, but he traded it for he traded it for uh, royalties. Mm -hmm. Well, he, that made him over a hundred million dollars. So he's like pretty rich too. You know, I don't know what okay. he's what he's worth, but it was the fact that he took the royalties instead of a paycheck. Okay. And that's it for this episode of The Shit Podcast. There's a lot of stuff to talk about still, but mm -hmm. like I said, we're wrapping up. Uh, we're running out of time, and I know that you guys uh, uh, have been sitting on the toilet for a while now, <laughs> so, so we'll cut it short. No, but thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, Jesse, for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, everybody. Who's how, watching? Can, how can people find you on social media? I'm on Instagram mostly as Jesse Apeyon bajo el final. That's Okay. How you and, can find uh, me. It's uh, uh, Jesse uh, AP underscore. Underscore. Uh -huh. Underscore. Yeah. And I'm Tu Amigo Sam on all social media and my YouTube channel. And you can find me on uh, all of the podcast platforms as Sta Cagado Podcast. And uh, thank you for, for joining us on this episode. We'll catch you on the next one.